All right, I'm, de- I'm delighted to be joined for an Allianz Hurling League preview by two Cork legends, Sean McGrath and Moss Mulcahy. Lads, thanks for popping into the studio here. No bad, Aidan. Um, how, how are you both keeping, I suppose, to Moss? Obviously, life is a bit more relaxed now, away from, from punditry and all that. How are you getting on? What am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> we try to keep you on your toes as best uh, as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, look. Yeah, had a good 25 years of it. So the last two years kind of been grand, nice and relaxing, go to the matches and enjoy them and become a fan of the Rebels, which has been great to go to Torles and Parky Grieve and really looking forward to next weekend now as well. Absolutely. Shawnee, you're, you're flat out. You're off to a match soon as well. You're tipping away all the time. Yeah, John Myler, 16s, um, giving a hand to John, Vincey Hurley, Mick Moyle, Peter Sykes and, and Parry Sullivan are involved. Um, and anyone that's worked with John, he's wholehearted, he's 100%. He's a load of games lined up for the next few weeks. So yeah, off to Mallow after that, or Bally, Bally Hooley actually, <laughs> against the Kerry Miners. So yeah, looking forward to that. Absolutely, yeah, my own Kerry Miners, so best of luck to, to all of them. <laughs> uh, the National Hurling League is back on the February, uh, the 4th of February. Uh, the league has changed quite a bit since you've played. Um I can't seem to make my mind up as to whether it's more or less important. It feels like the games are almost more important, but who actually wins it in the end seems to be less important. I don't know. What are your thoughts on the whole thing at the moment? Um, I suppose from my perspective, I suppose the, the split season has has changed it, Aidan. Um, like the last league game will be around the 19th of March. Like the turnover is fast. Like, and then if you get to a league final, you play on the 8th and then you're playing championship two. Two weeks later, like you're playing championship the twenty second of, of April. So traditionally, there was a huge gap between the last league game and championship. So I suppose it allowed management to get a few practice games in, and you might even get around to the club championships in. So you could gauge form, but like I mean, it's not a huge gauge at the moment. I suppose as regards you, know, you, you look at Waterford last year winning a league, and they ultimately didn't win the big honours. But certainly from Cork's perspective, you know, with a new manager and trying to find a blend of new players, the turnover is tight. So all the more reason I think that you need to get to a league final and shorten that five-week gap between your last league game and championships. So from that perspective, it is very, very important. Yeah, to most it almost seems some's like, sometimes like the, the, the team that goes and wins the league, it's like, oh yeah, well done, you won a league, but that means nothing. And now you have to go and prove it again. It's like, it's better off not to win it at all. Like, you know, keep the, keep the, keep the target off your back. Yeah, I suppose it, it depends what county you're coming from as well. If you're in Limerick, it's probably totally different. Uh, but in Cork... Um, not having had major success for a good long time now, I think it's important that we go and try and win a league. Um, they've have a, they have a bit of momentum coming into kind of the league after winning the the Monster Senior League. Um, the one thing that I don't like it's all con- condensed too much. Um, I look at what's happening in terms of intercounty, and everybody's talking about the big words in terms of strength and condition in SNC. And when do you get to do that, right? So people are doing that over a Christmas period, maybe into January. And then they're expected to play most of senior league matches. Guys are playing Fitzgibbon Cup colleges. Guys are playing um, training. They're playing matches between themselves as well. I know. I just noticed from a Cork perspective, and Shani, you're probably aware of this as well. The amount of injuries they picked up in the last couple of weeks. I don't know. Somebody mentioned to me out of the panel of forty six, there's nineteen guys injured, hmm. which is a massive, massive number. So while it's great to see we have league we have matches coming it's all condensed in and can you do the strength and conditioning and then can you put a guy out onto the field the following week and expect him to run and not pick up injuries and I think that's 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 an issue kind of a concern um, but I think from a Cork side of things I think we need to go and we need to win a league for just to keep the momentum going building a squad new management coming into play and okay fellas might say oh, it'll be very very hard because you've you've championship coming after that against losing a league final as a, uh, 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 and if you win it look what that brings forward then and look you've a massive massive squad in Cork so I think a lot of guys will get their opportunity a lot of guys will get and the manager will want to see a lot of guys playing because um, that's where you see whether guys are going to make it for championship or not is, is through a league campaign We'll delve back into the squad a little bit later on Tomas when you were playing was the league the pre-season because I suppose we have the pre-season now like you said the Munster Hurling League and before, obviously, we used to have the ward for Crystal, but that could have been knockout, you know, one game and done. Now every team has at least two games, and if you get into the final three. But for you, back then, starting out at the start of the year, was the league, you kind of just eased your way through it? Yeah, and it was the start of your season, right? Build your bit of training, you know? Um, I suppose it's totally different 30, 40 yeah. years ago in terms of, um, you know, you're looking at two nights a week, maybe training in a match at the weekend. There wasn't too many gyms or strength and conditioning around then, but... Um, but you build the league as a platform for the championship. Um, I think it's different now. I just I look my personal opinion. 
I don't like this Munster Senior League, to be honest with you. I think we're playing hurling at the wrong time of the year. There was, one, uh, I think, uh, two weeks ago, there was matches on a Tuesday night. I think Mallow in Tipperary played Waterford. It was cancelled from Liz Moore. It was transferred mm. to Mallow. And the night that was in it, asking players to go out, I think it was totally unfair. And unfortunately for younger generations, they're trying to prove themselves. Mm-hmm. They say, I should be on the Waterford squad. I should be on the Tipperary squad. I'm a man for championship. At the wrong time of the year for hurling, you know. So, And that 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 is probably for down the road in terms of finishing our, our Ireland series in July, that maybe it should be pushed out another month and give that maybe four-week gap mm-hmm. to give times the ideal preparation going into a league and the breakdown between championship. I just think it's it's all condensed too much. Did you make your debut in the league, Sean, or was it, were there games before the league you played in before? Um, I, what was the big help that time, um, Aidan, to us, a few coming through, was the Fitzgibbon competition was played sort of February. Um, it was wrapped up before the league and... I think a lot of the Cox selectors were probably going and looking at it as a an opportunity to see if, what fellas were like in a, in a relatively like it is a very it's a big competition it's a competitive competition it's a lot more competitive than the Munster Co-op League let's be honest so you know if fellas were performing in that it put them in the spotlight in the shop window for selection for the league so um, it, that was my sort of introduction I suppose to reasonably big league stuff if you want to call it that you know you knew you had to do well and you were up with playing with fellas like Derek McGrand Richard Woods and, and, and Dave Bennett, they were all big name players and they were all into county quality. So that was sort of, um, that was the, and Paddy Crowley was looking after us, Paul O'Rest, God rest him, and John Constantine, they were all, you know, former players and they were big names and they gave us great encouragement. And then you'd see, Jimmy was the manager at the time, you'd see Jimmy going to the matches and Tom Cash was a selector. So you knew that if you were performing well there, it gave you an opportunity. But from a Cork perspective then, it wasn't exactly a glamour tie. It was a Division 2 game. Came on as a sub against Westmead. Um, we hammered them the same day. But that was your be-all and end-all. It was your debut. It didn't matter who you were against. You were wearing the jersey and you had to shine. Um, and, you know, it, from that perspective, it actually made it, in a weird way, it made it a little bit easier because it was Division 2. The only big team in it were Waterford. We played them in a cracker in Parky Ring. But we had teams like London, Roscommon, Kerry. And while it didn't really get you ready for the big high-octane stuff like Clare in Limerick, in the Gaelic Grounds and Championship, it still allowed you to find your feet in a weird way and we kind of eased our way through the league and like Tomas said, we did two sessions, we didn't do a huge weight session, we didn't do any video analysis, we didn't do too much game plan stuff. I listened to Cairden or to Shane Kingston there a couple of weeks ago and he spoke and he obviously had a bird's eye view of it with his father. Like he, ta- he the amount of hours he said that managers were putting into it, it was a little bit off the wall to be honest and that time it was fierce and enjoyable we had our two nights Tuesday, Thursday we had our game the weekend and you know we had a good league because we didn't really play terribly competitive teams but we were all buzzing we'd all done reasonably well and we went into the clear game in, in good old Fettel you know it was a completely different approach to be honest <laughs> Well when you were young free and single back then when yeah. I was playing the game was half past two in Parky Cueve and it was probably half past two in the morning by the time you were getting home <laughs> because you walked your way from Black Rock into the city and probably ended up in Reardon's that night right so bit of crack, a bit of enjoyment and um, unfortunately those days are gone and um, it has gone very, very serious. Look, and I suppose there has to be as well. Um, You just hope that certain level of players that I feel at the moment are going to get more games in January and February Mm -hmm. than they might for a good part of the summer, right? Because there's so much happening. Guys that are playing Fitzgibbon are nearly playing with Cork as well in terms of the the Munster Senior League, you know, and it's, 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 it's a big workload at a time of the year when we should be looking towards May, June and July, which is the important months. And look, people would say, I, I looked at Kerry football last year and Jack O'Connor came in, he, take, he, take, he took them over. They went away and they won the, the McGrath Cup. Mm. They won the National League and mm. they won the All-Ireland afterwards, right? Mm. So Clean sweep. They're, they're, <laughs> yeah, you know, so a clean sweep across the board. And there is, if you're a new manager and you're, you want to set out your own stall, Kenny did it for years. Mm. People were saying, how can they do it? They're winning the National League and they're winning All-Ireland. So, um. There's, there's, there, I, I just think for Pat Ryan, I think it's, it's important to keep the momentum going. Get, and I think they have to maybe find a couple of players, but the only way you're going to find them is through a national league campaign, and then you got to get continuity. And how you get that in a short period of time mm. to get to your best fifteen Difficult. that you pick over the forty six if you're carrying forty six in the panel, and does everybody get an opportunity? Or does a wee whittle down right? So it's all very, very condensed, you know. And you're very little in the club activity, you know, that you're going to see mm. an inter county player playing. Yeah. a senior Harlem League match over that period of time mm. that he's actually going to say I'm putting my hands up for the Cork selector because it won't happen 
you mentioned there that uh, you went for maybe a few refreshments after the league back in the day. Like, I ah, yeah, was you, just a kind of a burger and chips you, <laughs> and a seven up or a soda. Would you go as the team? Like, would you maybe go with a few of the lads from you know if you if you went to Ennis? Like, would you go to Ennis with a few of the, the Clare boys or something like that? Or was that? No, geez, not a chance. God, <laughs> <laughs> it was bad enough playing these fellas, but no, straight back, straight back, and back to your own home patch. You know, um, look, back then you never really met guys. Um, maybe after matches, big matches. No, I think the one big one that we had. That we met was was one of the greatest days we we had was ninety three league final we played Wexford above in um in Turles and the first match was a draw and uh, Wexford hadn't won a lot mm. for a long period of time and yeah. there was a guy Michael Foley he was the CEO of Heineken inside in Cork and you had Jim Balger the horse race trainer mad mad uh, Wexford guys and uh, there was a a reception for the teams after the match and the match ended in a draw and somebody let loose that they had actually had the boot full of champagne. For Wexford because it was going to be they were taught they were expecting yeah. to be Cork right? going to, it was their big day and they had a boot full of champagne they were expecting kind of they'd win it and they'd break out the champagne so we were kind of saying that's there's no point keeping it for next week no because it could go, could go <laughs> off so <laughs> could go and bring, open the boot and bring it in so that was the first time maybe we met a, a squad after the match and uh, three memorable matches after that great and like when you get to a league fine like last year you you got to win it then because you're putting doubts in your head afterwards oh, is, is this fella good enough for championship or is he not good enough for, for championship you got to win it when you get there and I think that's important for Cork this year yeah like winning stuff like it brings the group so much together like Sean when, when you won like your, your first kind of title in, in with Cork like I can imagine that sort of togetherness it brings like to the group and you know like that look you'll have your bit where you go out for maybe a week you celebrate it and all that but you know it just everybody gets to know each other that kind of way and it just builds that sort of brotherhood within the dressing room yeah like the 98 league was you know, a fast forward from the ninety three one, like Tomas said, Cork won a brilliant trilogy, I suppose, beating Wexford in ninety three. But the next league win then was ninety eight, which felt like a famine of five years. We haven't won one since. That'll tell you what kind of a famine we're going through. No, yeah. but winning in ninety eight, um, you know, yeah, it set us up well. We had a brilliant league semi final win against, you know, the mighty Clare team at that time, who were brilliant. They were a fabulous side, brilliant manager, marquee players, and they had a real powerhouse game, but very physical as well. And now there was loads of rumours after that they didn't really train that well or at least they trained the morning of the game and all this but we didn't really care I mean it was a young team you know ably led by the brilliant Brian Corcoran but the rest of us were very very young and kind of finding our feet at that level and winning it then set us up well for a couple of weeks later we played Limerick in Championship and beat them and it doesn't really get spoken about much that Limerick win but again it was Cork's first win of note in Championship since 92 I think it was like Cork had gone 93, 94, 95, 96 bit unlucky in 97 but we had, we'd only beaten Kerry I think in all those years so winning 98 was massive massive for the county it gave us a bit of a boost I'll always remember coming in and the great Johnny Clifford was outside the dressing room he wasn't involved in the team at the time but just the clap and the hug that he gave everyone you could feel the importance it meant to Cork Hurling now we were beaten well after by Clare but definitely that buzz around the time of winning the league final the victory it was it was a you know there are, there are only two major competitions really at inter-county level, it's the All-Ireland. Well, there's three, sorry. There's the Provincial, obviously. There's the All-Ireland and, and there's the National Hurling League. So to win it was huge for the county. It was huge for the panel at the time. It was a young panel made up of a load of 20 and 21-year-olds that backbone the 97 and 98 winning All-Ireland under-21 teams. So very, very young, inexperienced. And you're right in the morale, the boost. And then it allowed fellas, uh, a kind of comedy characters like you know, Shawnee Farrell and these fellas. You know, he had a brilliant league, finally got one three and... He didn't have to tell fellas about it. You know, it just, you know, it lent itself to a good atmosphere in the dressing room and gave us a huge boost in coming to the championship. Uh, let's turn our attention now, I suppose, to, to today and obviously Pat Ryan taking charge of his first campaign. Like, you know, we, we talk about teams building and building and building and obviously Pat, look, it's his first year and maybe there's some leeway there, but like even, I, I don't really like to, to look at other sports, but like Arsenal, they're just going to win in the league this year, you know. It's just not everyone kind of start the year just going, oh, they're building, they're building, they're building. You want to copy yourself on us, yeah. I'm by no means an Arsenal fan. 17 day games to yeah. I'm by no means an Arsenal fan. But, you know, they're just going and doing it. Like, there's no more waiting around. We're waiting for, I don't know, this player or that player. We're waiting for one more piece of the puzzle. They're just going and doing it. And there's that kind of element where you can do all the building you want and all the waiting for players to mature. But at the end of the day, there comes a time where you just have to go and perform and go and achieve as well. Like, yeah, I suppose the only difference, I suppose, is um, Arteta's had a, a bit of a, a run into it, say, like he f- at this point in time last year, he was 17 or 18 points in differential, say, to the points he's gained this year. Pat Ryan is coming in and 
got a huge job, a task at hand, Aidan. I mean, if you look at last year's championship, um, I actually think there's five or six places up for grabs, like, and even some of the places or some of the players that you could say are odds on to start positionally, they might be in different positions. So, you know, Pat has a huge job at hand. He's got um, Mark Homan as a huge loss. Again, Mark, I would think, is nailed on to start, but where do you start him? So there's a bit of a debate about his best position, but he's out. And Dara Fitzgibbon is coming back from injury. Joe Mellerick, I heard, has picked up another injury. And I think the loss, and I'm surprised it didn't get more of a spotlight. I think Mark Keane is a massive loss. Like, you know, he he played championship last year in the forward line, but talking to Kieran and the Rock, and be you know be talking to him on, on and off, and they would say like that if they if they were still there, they'd have given him a rattle at, at half back. So yeah, it, it certainly looked like he were he was going to get that chance this year. Maybe, yeah, um, maybe it's just that you feel that there's more options in in attack. To be honest, than there are, there are in defence, and but like Pat has to find. You know, a couple of different. He's to find a position for all over the field, but certainly I think that we just need to nail in that full back position. And you know, Kieran Joyce is a brilliant centre back, um, but like the other night in, in Fitzgibbon, Evan Nyland played with it with, with UCG and played off of him and got nine or ten points from play. So again, then you know, Pat has to decide come championship if this, if something similar happens, what's our game plan? Who is my midfield formation? And what do the midfielders do? Do they pick up the centre forward? So there's a huge difference, I think, between. Pat Ryan's position and, and Arteta's position in Arsenal and to Tomas's point he's got a short window like he's got three home games two away games he's got five games in a condensed period you'd like to think you know if you were manager in all those five games you start your 13 or 14 that maybe that will take the championship but Pat might have to tinker like mm, I agree with you there yeah. You know, yeah, and, the only, and the only game yeah. he can really tinker in is the one against West Mead because the rest of them are all really really hard so I think he's got a huge challenge Aidan and while you're saying he, and I agree with you he has to go you know, and win every game and build morale and, and, and build an atmosphere in the camp, he still has to find a few players and you can only do that by a bit of experimentation. And like That's my point going back to the injury scenario and the training and the strength and conditioning and then the matches so early in terms of, like, for me, like the Bars were brilliant in the county championship this year. They were, they were, they were the farm team, they had a great campaign. You take three or four of their players, right? You take Ben O'Connor, you take Eaton Toomey, you take Ben Cunningham, and you take Brian Hayes. Mm-hmm. To me, they were the four stand-up performers. Oh. I'd love to see the four of those starting against Limerick next hour, on, on Saturday night because they deserve that chance yeah. because they performed and they performed at the highest level in Cork County Championship. And it was a brilliant championship campaign. Now, because of injuries, you're probably not going to see a few of these guys, yeah. right? So when do you get a chance to see them? And like you get a performance out of them against Limerick in, a, in an open league match and you're saying... Yeah, I've I've two of these that I want in my starting fifteen come championship time. Uh, I'll give another run. I'll give another games. And in certain ways, like the junior championship, the intermediate, there is a massive, massive step up though to senior, mm-hmm. right? Guys that have might have played well throughout the campaign. I know you mentioned Mark Keane and giving him a chance in defence. But why wasn't he given a chance in defence last year? Why mm-hmm. did they pick him half forward if they felt that he was going to be a good yeah. defender? And that's where he played with yeah. his club. He was a dominant centre back with his club. Why didn't he give him an opportunity? Because mm. everybody looked. We were crying out for a dominant number six. Mm. And maybe moved Tim O'Mahony up the and field. Moved at Tim the time, right? up the yeah. field at the time, right? Mm. You know, why didn't they give him a chance there, right? So I think and the encouraging signs that I, I'm listening to from Pat Ryan over the last two or three matches that he's played, he says we're we're not going down the tactic road yet. We're not going down the terms of our game plan yet. We're going down and we're building a team. That will work their socks off for the 60, 70 minutes of a game. And we want them to work as hard as they possibly can. And I think if he starts drilling that into guys right up to the last minute, those people left Parky Ring last weekend, they were going away, at Pine Stone, time was up, the match was over. But Carter didn't give in. He made a couple of substitutes, substitutions, they got themselves back into the game and they won the game afterwards. If you can drill that into a team, everything else will fall into a place. They never say die attitude. They're never giving up on a ball. You chase every single ball. We have unbelievable hurlers. We have unbelievable talent. We have unbelievable stature, size, physique, right? To cope with many teams, maybe Bar, Bar Limerick. But it's gelling that into a 15 man team or a 20 man squad or a 25 man squad to say, we fight for everyone on the field to play. And we're never done. We're never beaten. Like, Shani, you've been in games. I've been in games. Seven points down in the second half. And Cork still won matches. That has to happen. And I think that's Pat, I think, in his selectors are saying, 
this is where we need to work at first. Mm. The work ethic, the time in the gym, all that stuff. But when you get on the field to play, you non-stop running, you non-stop tackling, you're hooking, you're blocking. And I think once you get gels that into a team, I'd be confident enough that they will have a very, very good league campaign because um, they need it. I spoke to Patrick Horgan on Wednesday. We'll hear that chat Saturday <clears throat> before the game, 6pm on the bigger bench. But like that, like what you just said there now, I said to him that from I saw them play in Tralee against Kerry and they seem to be playing more direct. And I said that to Patrick and Patrick said, well, we actually haven't talked at all about tactics. So that for me seems totally it's up there straight away. It's a, it's a change of mentality that they're going more direct without anybody actually ever telling them to do it. They've, they've taken upon themselves it's the way they're playing the game they've decided let's get the ball in here quickly yeah I know maybe Pat is saying that because at some stage he, he probably has to pull out the tactics board whether you like it or not Aidan um, I'm with Tomas like I think 90% of a team's set up is about attitude heart spirit etc etc I suppose un- unfortunately and I say unfortunately because I think the game has gone too tactical mm. <laughs> but unfortunately Pat at some stage is going to have to pull out the board because you know Canark is doing an incredible job with Limerick and Everything seems to be thrown at him over this Christmas again. The Tina G um, reruns show at the, the All Ireland final. And what a game. I mean, f- you forget I was at it, you forget what good a game it was. But they still saw it out. And Kilkenny were desperate traditional and they went long at times. They brought on Walter Walsh and he aerial bombardment and he won a few balls. He set up the goal. But at some stage, I suppose, Pat is going to have to put out that tactics board and, and go through it. So for now, yeah, it's very traditional and it's very much getting players. Um, to take to the field let alone just you know like take to the field because you know, like Tomás mentioned four Bears players there Eaton Toomey has, pick, has picked up a hamstring injury I heard yep. and Ben Cunningham no it's not serious but he's still he's out still like out. so I'd say Pat's yeah. modus operandi yeah. at the moment is get fellas to take to the bloody field get game time, get game time yeah. but as the year goes on Aidan um, you know they are going to have to have a look at it because you know Darry Egan is very tactical inside in Wexford and while I- Liam Cahill I remember Liam playing played with him and with Railway Cup stuff he was a very cut and trust, let it go kind of fella. He was teak tough, he was a brilliant player. But you know, he does have a tactical element and he was very tactical against Cork when they won their two All-Ireland under-21 medals. And So Pat is going to have to face that challenge head on. He's got some brilliant fellas in the back room with him to assist in that. Um, but certainly for a moment, you know, it's encouraging to hear Pat- Patrick saying that because it sounds like a camp that's enjoying itself and they're enjoying the training, they're enjoying the guys involved, you know, and that's part of the thing as well. There's a buzz, Brendan Coleman and Rasper Kind and all these fellas. They're all good characters. They've all been around in the club scene. Rasper had a great involvement with him O'Kelly. So a good camp this time of the year is brilliant, but there's huge challenges that'll, you know, lie ahead. It's going to be a tough league campaign. Three home games, Limerick, Waterford, Westmead at home, tough away games. Galway and Clare are two tough away games. I mean, going to Salt Hill or Pierce Stadium is a very, very hard game. Um, this time of the year, this time of the year Aiden, yeah. with the wind howling in. So, you know, at some stage, as I said, I keep going back to it, they are going to have to sit down and, and decide, you know, Willow Donahue now, for example, you know, they can allow D- Dermot Burns, Limerick can now, sorry, and, and Declan Hannon to sit. Now, if we did something similar, and I just mentioned Kieran Joyce, and he just sits, like Willow Donahue knows exactly what he's to do inside in that Limerick setup. And at the moment, you know, Dara Fitzgibbon is injured. Do, do Cork have their two settled midfielders? That's debatable. Limerick are very, very settled and they know exactly what they're doing on the field. So Pat has all those things to deal with as the year is going on. But for now, it sounds like it's a good, happy camp and I'd say they're mad to come forward to the game tonight. But he's, he's, he's a lot coming from last year as well, right? To be fair to the boys that were there, right? I mean, you look back at the Galway match as well. We should have won that match. Oh, yeah, we should have won the match by seven or eight points, right? So, like, there's been a very good team there for the last number of years where I had a problem with Cork was the style of play. We were too open. We were making too much mistakes in the back line. We were going short too much. And Pat with his 20 and 21 team was a bit different. It was. I have no problem with the ball going short. If you're in trouble and you need to find an extra man or you want to find a spare man, you give him the ball. But at times we were going across the field five or six times when you could have had the ball down the danger area. Much quicker, much better for forward. Shawnee, Shana, you're inside. You love to get the ball quick. Mm-hmm. Down in front of you quick, rather than giving chances to defenders to come back. And I think the big thing for us is getting that full back line and that half back line and the goalkeeper settled in as quickly as possible so now everybody, everybody knows. I think Joyce, and that's not knocking Mark Cohen. Mark Cohen was an unbelievable hurler. But I thought last year at times when Mark Cohen went out to the wing, he was even joining his hurler a bit mm. more. He got two points, I think, when the first match that he played above Thurles, mm. but wing back, two, yeah. two points from wing back. But he enjoyed his hurling a bit more. He was under so much pressure at number six because of the game we were playing. I, I look at Limerick and I see what the Limerick boys are at. And they're saying, Declan Hannon is there for the last 10 years. Mm. What's making Declan Hannon so different to everybody else? 
Declan Hallen is controlling number six. Yeah. And if Dermot Byrne goes 10 yards or 15 yards above him upfield, mm. or Kyle Hayes on the other side, hey, come back. He stay in the line. Mm. And that line is protecting two, three, and four. So there's no dragging out the field. There's mm. no low ball. Be going and put inside that your full back is going to be exposed. As a unit, the six of them, but they can all hurl. Mm. They're brilliant, strong, physical guys. But their base is from there. That is their base that they actually don't concede as much. And there's the gap. I mean, we were exposed so much over the last two or three years by guys going away up the field. And the gap between the full back line and the half back line. And Mark was being pulled out of position. He was going out towards midfield. He was mm. going to wing back. And next thing, the whole thing opened up. And look at the goals. People down the centre of the channels. I think, Pat, that's number one job. Stop that from happening. Because up, up beyond that. You put Darrell Fitzgibbon in, it's probably going to be who's going to be midfield with Darrell Fitzgibbon. Mm, who's, going, mm. who's going to partner, right? Yeah. So Darrell Fitzgibbon midfield. And then you look beyond that. Look at the talent that's there. Look at Conor Leanne. Look what he's playing. Oh, he's playing at the moment. You look at Shane Kingston. You mm. look at Patrick. You look at kind of the, the, the guys I mentioned now, Brian Bobby Flynn, and then, yeah. Flynn, Ben Cunningham and all these guys. Look at the size. Look at the stature. Yeah. It's building a unit around mm-hmm. that as well, right, you know? And um, I think I think Pat will be, I think he'll be very good, to be honest with you. I think uh, two players uh, worth a mention as well, especially in the area we're talking about there in the half-back line. Tommy O'Connell seemed to start most of the Munster Hurling League there at number six. And like you said, you know, he hardly ever moved really from a certain area on the pitch, you know, looked very controlled there. And then on the other end, I suppose they, t- they stick out the two white helmets. Decky Dalton was absolutely flying as well. And it looks a real alternative sort of option in there. Loved the ball coming in down top of him. You know, I saw him in, in Tralee absolutely destroyed the, the full back line. He came out wing forward and absolutely destroyed the half back line. He just looks really, really uh, versatile and that sort of option Cork haven't had in a while as well, you know. And someone like that as well to take the pressure off the likes of Patrick Horgan and Conor Lehan as well, who were looked up to maybe on their own last year in terms of trying to get Cork over the line in some games. Yeah, there are two noteworthy players, definitely. Um, Tommy's been outstanding over the last couple of years with, with Middleton and Wyndham Wonder County. He was certainly one of the marquee players. I thought at different stages last year, saw a couple of the Father O'Neill's games, actually Dickie Dalton wasn't having a great season, but really stepped up when it was mattered in the second half against Corsi's in the final. He was absolutely outstanding. Real real leadership mm-hmm. stuff. And, you know, you, you, you look at that then and say, could he transfer that to a, a Cork setup? Could he become, inherit the, the free taking duties from Patrick and Connor Lee Hand? Say, Connor took a few last year when Patrick wasn't playing. So, you know, at some stage, Cork are going to need to look for a, a free taker. So, yeah, you're right, Aidan. I mean, at some stage, you're going to have to look at those players. Um, and you could extend it to other players as well. Like, he, he didn't shoot the lights out against um, against Tip in the co op game, but he was very good for you well the other night. Fellas like Sean Toomey as well. I, I think over the next couple of years, you now Cork. Pat is with Cork at the moment and he's going to live in the here and the now but if you're looking beyond the here and the now over the next few years Cork need to find a few players and definitely fellas like Tommy um, fellas like Decky um, Sean Toomey Brian Hayes and and the thing with them as well is their physicality they kind of buck the trend a little bit Shane Kingston strong low to the ground Alan Cadigan low to the ground but very very strong and then you've got these six footers as well and you know you look at Garrod Hagerty up on the other side of the field with, with, with Limerick when puck outs come up it's a huge advantage. I can imagine when Pat Collins is looking up the field, it's it's a huge advantage for a goalkeeper if a sharp puck out isn't done, if the midfielder hasn't broken for a quick one, just to go along and just see how it goes. And definitely the players that you, you, you mentioned are big and strong. But again, you're back to the conundrum. What does Pat do now, for instance, if Decky starts against Limerick and starts against um, Galway and he's a poor game? You know, does he listen to the crowd maybe saying, ah, Jesus, you have to try someone else? Or does he show patience? Because that's the challenge he's going to have as well. Sometimes fellas will take a couple of games to really find their form. Dickie's had had no real run at it, say, like where he's got a couple of games consecutively. Um, and if he got a three or four game run, no, albeit there are only five league games, but if he could get a run, he could find his form. And, you know, um, a fella will find his form himself. And also then by maybe seeing the arm around the shoulder and a management group that are giving him encouragement. And if he goes through a game where he's scoreless, someone to say, hey, you'll be fine the next day. So, you know, that's but that's management. That's what he's got to decide and he's got to work out. But definitely those players, Tommy, um, Decky Dalton. I thought Brian Hayes as well against against Tip, you know, got a goal when it was needed, got a goal out of nothing. He was the highest scorer from play in the club championship last year. Six foot two, six foot three. You know, knowing some of the bars last he's finding cocky as well, you know. I those kind of I'd say the other occasion <laughs> wouldn't face him too much. I can imagine him going away, getting his one two and it wants to final and back into Mox after for a few for a few points and joined it.